land forms of the earth. The earth, it's what we all have in common. We dwell among its mysteries and beauty every day. Yet, we know very little about this sole, intelligent, life-bearing planet. What has shaped this huge land mass that we live in? The answers lie hidden deep inside our Earth. In the years of continental drift, of plate tectonics and in the landforms around us that have stood by since millions of years shaping the world we thrive in. We start by peeking into the Earth's surface also known as lithosphere knowing the layers that together make the solid mass of the Earth the Earth is primarily made of the crust, the upper mantle, which also comprises of the asthenosphere and the lower mantle, beneath which lies the outer core and the inner core. The Earth is made up of these distinct layers, which are like layers of spheres inside spheres. The deeper layers are hotter, denser and are composed of heavier materials exerting greater pressure than the outer layers. The Earth's first layer has an iron-nickel core that is about 2,100 miles in radius. The inner core is solid and may have a temperature up to 7,200 or 7,500 degrees Celsius which is hotter than the surface of the Sun along with a radius of about 750 miles and thickness of 1228 kilometers. The outer core is in a liquid state and has a temperature of about 3700 to 4300 degrees Celsius along with a radius of 1400 miles and thickness of 2260 kilometers. The Lehman discontinuity separates the inner core and the outer core. Above the core lies the rocky mantle, which is composed of silicon, oxygen, magnesium, iron, aluminium, and calcium. The upper mantle is rigid and is part of the lithosphere along with the Earth's crust. It also consists of the asthenosphere that exhibits plastic-like properties. It is located below the lithosphere between 100 to 250 kilometers deep. On the other hand, the lower mantle flows slowly at a rate of a few centimeters per year. The mantle gets warmer with depth. The top of the mantle is about 870 degrees Celsius and the bottom of the mantle has a temperature of about 2200 to 3700 degrees Celsius. The mantle is about 1700 miles in radius and has a thickness of 2750 kilometers. The Gutenberg discontinuity separates the outer core and the mantle. Above the mantle, the Earth's thin rocky crust is composed of silicon, aluminium, calcium, sodium and potassium. The crust is divided into continental crust, which is about 25 to 90 kilometers thick and bears plates that drift slowly, perhaps only a few centimeters each year, atop the less rigid mantle and the oceanic crust, which is thinner under the oceans and is 6 to 11 kilometers thick. The lithosphere is defined as the crust and the upper mantle together, a rigid layer about 100 to 200 kilometers thick. The Mohorovicic discontinuity 
is the separation between the crust and the upper mantle. Now that we know a little bit about the layers, we take a closer look at the theory of plate tectonics. The theory states that the lithosphere is broken into seven large rigid pieces called plates which are drifting 2 cm to 10 cm per year in relationship to each other. Like cars in a demolition derby crashing together or side swiping each other from 200 million years ago till today. The plates are the African, North American, South American, Eurasian, Australian, Antarctic and Pacific plates and their boundaries are called as plate boundaries. The amazing transition might have happened 2.5 billion years ago when the craters were created and there was one continent called Ur that alone existed on the planet. Around a substantial half a billion years later, Arctica took shape on the surface of the Earth. Around 1.5 billion years ago, passing by another half a billion years, Atlantica started to make its presence. After a brief period of no movement, around 1.08 million years ago, Arctica collided with present-day Eastern Antarctica to form Nuna. Then Nuna, Atlantica and Ur, placed at different areas of the Earth, collided and merged to form the supercontinent Rodinia around 1 billion to 400 million years ago. Then, around 300 million years ago, the three land masses that formed Rodinia separated and came back in a new configuration called Pangaea. Pangaea then came apart, splitting up Ur and Atlantica too, to form today's plate tectonics. In between this transition, the Pangaea had split apart to form two land masses called Laurasia and Gondwana land around 145 million years ago, which then again split around 65 million years ago, causing one piece of Gondwana land called India to join Asia. The next stop would be to learn about the basic landforms like mountains, plains, plateaus and others that cover the vast terrains of the earth, creating the imagery of a bright, life-enriching planet called Earth. Mountains are landforms that rise well above the surrounding land in sharp or slightly rounded peaks, steeper, larger and taller than hills and are more than 600 meters in height. They are formed when the Earth's crust, made up of large tectonic plates that fit into each other, keep moving a few centimeters every year along the boundaries to collide and thicken the crust that leads to the crust lifting and eventually forming the mountains. Mountain erosion takes place due to frost primarily, where 
water flows into the cracks and crevices of the rocks during daytime and freezes as the temperature drops in the night. The frozen water expands and forms powerful wedges which erode large pieces of mountain rock. Other processes include the slow carving by glaciers and rivers which wears the rock down to smaller, finite particles. A hill or a fault block mountain is another landform that extends above the surrounding terrain. It is similar to a mountain but smaller in size compared to it. Hills are non-volcanic, unlike mountains. They have a massive summit. Hills are formed usually through faults by the movement of large crustal blocks when forces in the Earth's crust pull it apart. Some parts of the Earth are pushed upward and others collapse down to form hills. There, erosion of hills is very alike to that of mountains. A plateau is an area of highland consisting of relatively flat terrain and possessing a flat top which is elevated thousands of feet above a surrounding area. Plateaus are formed through the processes of belling up of volcanic magma, erosion by water and glaciers. Magma rises up from the mantle, causing the ground to swell upward and thus large flat areas are uplifted. It is also formed by the building up of lava that spreads outward from cracks and weak areas of the crust. Erosion of plateaus takes place mainly due to the movement of flowing water down the plains of the plateau and also due to heavy seismic activity. Originating on land, glaciers are a large body of ice spreading over vast areas that flow slowly due to the stresses induced by their weight. They are formed when snow piles up over the years excessively, causing the weight of the snow on top to compress the snow at the bottom over thousands of years, adding multiple layers on top and adding more weight. The ice eventually gets compressed so much that most of the air is forced out, forming a glacier. Rock failure is the primary reason for its erosion and it can occur because of the growth of pre-existing cracks or the formation of new cracks. Cracks form around the weak spots within the rock. These weaknesses can be on the scale of large visible joints down to microscopic cleavage planes. Crack growth may be due to pressure release before glaciation, chemical weathering and volume change or due to the expansion of ice when water freezes. A plain is a vast stretch of land that is flat or gently rolling in nature. Plains are formed in several different ways. A vast dried up lake or a glacier moving past a particular area thereby flattening it by its sheer weight are two such ways. The vast flat or almost concave land left behind by them is technically what becomes a plain. Erosion of plains is in simpler words nothing other than soil erosion. The wearing away, detachment and transportation of soil from one place to another by moving water, blowing wind, or other causes is called soil erosion. Since plains are flat stretches of land, soil erosion takes place at a faster rate than most other land masses. This is how the landforms you see around us have evolved since generations molding our earth into a beautiful and enigmatic landscape that still inspires and amazes us, even through the scale of a bird's eye view from outer space.